We're going to be talking about volume again today. Remember, the volume equation is always the base times the height. But remember, this base, this big B, doesn't mean just a one dimension. It means the area of the face. It means the face area. So if we have that face is a, is a square for a cube, it is a triangle, if we're talking about a triangular prism. And it's a rectangle if we're talking about a rectangular prism. Remember, volume talks about capacity, how much is inside that three-dimensional shape. And so this area is the area of the face times the height of how many of those faces how many of those faces are you stacking up to make that rectangular prism? And that's what we're always thinking about when we're doing the volume. Today we're gonna to be talking about an aquarium again, similar to yesterday, but we're gonna know some different information about that aquarium and we're going to be using that to solve something else. So I know I'm gonna be talking about, we will be working with a rectangular prism because my problem says that that's the shape of my aquarium. So I'm going to draw a rectangular prism here. Can you move the board just a little to the right? Uh oh, what happened? If I start talking, then maybe it'll come back. So just this way more. Am I going the right way? Is that okay? Yes, the mirror, I can see that. I can see the, the fan, it's kind of blue. Distracting. Sorry. That's, I'll... Forward. That's it. Forward. The problem is I need space for me. <laughs> so I'll try and do it. All right. So we have a rectangular prism and our rectangular prism of the aquarium. I'm about ready to dump my book now. I have no room. All right. About ready to dump my uh the rectangular prism has this space. Let me just write the numbers down, then I'll turn it back over. Of 24 and 25 hundredths of an inch. Um, I actually don't know how tall it is. The problem won't, doesn't tell me, but it tells me that this dimension going back here is, I'm gonna write it a little bit neater so we can see it, is 12 and 5 tenths of an inch. And this time it tells me the volume. This time I know the capacity inside and it's a big number. It is same when we did thousand seven hundred. I'm going to move as soon as I get the, the numbers down and seventy five hundredths cubic inches. Oh, I was just saying this is the same one we did earlier. I thought we were going to do a different one, but that's okay. Did you want me to pick a different one? That's okay. Okay. So this big B, remember, is the area of the face. It is not just one dimension. It's an area. So if I think about this time, this time I know the volume, I know two of the dimensions, and I'm going to use that formula to find that third dimension. So started with the picture, we're gonna go from a picture and we're going to, from the picture, write down something, we're gonna substitute what we already know. So for volume, I know the volume is 3,058. 7,500. I have to actually start to write over here because it's not, I don't quite know that number yet. So I'm going to move big B over here for right now. And I'm going to be thinking about what big B is. Remember big B is for my face that I'm using. And in this case, I'm using a rectangle and my rectangle dimensions I'm using this red rectangle over here. And I know one dimension, but I don't know the other. So big B is base times height. It's 24 and 25 hundredths of an inch times whatever the height is. The height is really what I'm looking for in the problem. So I just have to leave that H there. I don't know what it is. You can move that back and to the left a little bit, Mrs. Brown. You want me to do what? Push yeah. back? And yeah, to the left a little bit. That's good. Like that? Yes. That's good. All right. Thank you. So now for B, I'm going to substitute this, these numbers, 24 and 25 hundredths, 
times H, that's B. Now I have to substitute what H is. H is this dimension I didn't use yet because it's all these spaces stacked up, stacked up how high? 12 and 5 tenths. So I'm going to substitute 12 and 5 tenths. Okay, so now I'm looking at that problem. Taking a step back, I drew the picture, I substituted what I knew, and I was being careful to choose the right formula for the right face for the shape that I had. Now I'm going to combine what I know, and I see that I took off the units. I want to make sure I put it back in. So on this side of the equation, I have one number. It's a big number, but I just have one number here. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to rewrite it again. We'll look at this side of the equation right now. I see that I have three numbers that want to be multiplied together. Two of them I know, one of them I don't. So to simplify, I'm going to at least put those two numbers together. I'm going to, the operation between them is multiply. I'm going to multiply 24, I said 24 and wrote 25, 24 and 25 hundredths, and I'm going to multiply that by 12 and 5 tenths. I could be thinking of another way to do it, but right now I'm going to do the algorithm, and then I'm going to check it on a calculator to be sure. This is one of those problems when I can do that. 5 times 5 is 25. I'm going to carry my 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 11, 12. Carry a 1. 5 times 4 is 20, plus one more makes 21. Now I have 2 to worry about. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more makes 12. I keep using my fingers. I just hold up what I need to hold up. Now I'm going to look at that digit there. I'm going to put a 0 for a placeholder. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 more makes 5. 2 times 4 is 8. And 2 times 2 is 4. Now I'm going to the next digit. I am grateful for it a one because I can just one times every number is that number. So I can just write all of those digits down. Now I'm thinking before I get even started, before I even want to do the answer, because I want to make, I don't want my answer to skew my thinking and influence my thinking. I want to think about what could this number be? This is 24 times 12. If I think of 12 as 10 and 2, 24 times. 10, oh, I know that 24 times 10 is 240. So I get to just put the zero at the end because I know when I add a zero to the end of a number, it's multiplying by 10. And 224 is 48. So if I add those two numbers together, it's about 300. My answer here should be about 300. So that's what I'm hoping for. One thing that I would do, Mrs. Brown, when I'm thinking that through is 24 and 12, right? There, 12, 24 is a multiple of 12. So the next multiple, 12, 24 would be 36. So I was thinking that 36, 360. About 360. So yeah. that's a quicker way. Yeah. And also on that, on that first line, when you're doing that, that first decimal, that and five tenths, I would think of that as half of uh, half of 25, which would be 125, like half of a quarter, and then half of 24 is 12, so I would get 12. So 12 and that, I know that that answer is correct, that 121 and 25. That's just my thinking when I'm looking at the numbers. Kind of capture your thinking. I've seen those digits transferring over that you were saying there. Like it, I like it. Four into a six, seven. Something's wrong. Yeah, I, I interrupted you on your addition, so you're gonna have to go back. I think still something's wrong because I'm not getting anywhere near what I think I should be getting. Well, we'll see. Five. I'm wondering if I made a mistake at the multiplication. Five and two, and five is seven. That's eight. Two and eight is ten plus. 14, carry my one, one, two, three, four, eight. Something's wrong. Oh, yes. I see what you did wrong. 
do you? Could you help me, please? I would love someone else to critique my reasoning. I could. Um, well, the five is when you multiplied by the five, it was really tense. You know, we kind of ignore those decimals in between. Oh, my. The second row would be your tens if we were ignoring the decimals until we get to the end. So that third row should be in the hundreds. So you should have one hundred times five. So the first number I should be seeing there would be 500. So I should have had, I made yeah. a favorite mistake. I should have two places. One, two. I got so excited that was a one and I just got two places going there. Five, two, so I have to go five, two. Now I'm really careful and two. So now I'm going to try it. And the reason I knew I was off because this would have been only 84. There's no way 24 times 12 is only 84. So I knew something had to be off there. I, t I interrupted you because I was trying to share my thinking that you were like in the zone. So I, was I, all I think I was all excited with that being a one. I, <laughs> I think I would have gone there anyway. Oh, it's a one. It's going to be the same number that's on top. I'm just like, oh, it's easy. It's going to be great, T. Pride goes before the fall. Ten. So easy that you made a mistake. Exactly. 10, 11, 12, 13. We have 10 again. Okay. 8, 9, 10. Okay. I'm feeling better now. Here's why I'm feeling better. One, two, three places here for the decimals. I'm going to check it on the calculator. Just three. in case. Hey, guys, we're going to want a calculator for this lesson. This one would be one you want to try on your own, and then you want to try a calculator. So I believe it's three. I claim. It's 323 and 125 thousandths. And that would be inches times inches, so inches squared. And I still keep H from big B because I still don't know it because that's what we're trying to find out. Makes me feel better. It's much better than the answer I had before, or that was 300. And you always check on a calculator when you're moving forward. I'm always showing my work. So if this were the mistake and I put it in here, even if I couldn't show it on a calculator, somebody very easily could see I made a mistake here, but everything I did here was mathematically correct. My reasoning is correct, made a little error. I'm so glad we have people checking and a calculator check. Is it okay on the calculator? Uh, yes. And <clears throat> remember, I'm looking at that half of 25, so half of when I'm taking and half, right? So half of 25 hundredths, that's a quarter, and half of a quarter is 12 and five. So I know that's correct. And then I know that half of four was 24. So I know that's right. I'll know the decimal's right. Always great if you can think of another way to check the work that we've already done. That's always the best way. All right, so now I'm looking at this problem and I see, I make, I'll make the, that face, that face of yikes. I make the yikes face. I see a big number here. I see another big number here and I have it multiplied by a height. And I need to figure out what the height is because I don't wanna know what the height is times 300. I don't wanna know what the height is by itself. So the numbers are big and I start to, wonder now what to do. A good mathematician, I've seen types of problems like this before, I just haven't seen it with these big numbers. I've seen problems where I had one number on one side and then something multiplied by a box and I had to figure out the box. So a good mathematician is try to think of an easier problem. Try to think of an easier problem and solve it as easier or simpler problem. Probably I like the word simpler. Try to think of a problem with simpler numbers and then use that strategy. So I've seen these problems. What have I seen before? I've seen numbers where the, the numbers were a lot easier. So I'm going to try and see if I can simplify it. Some, one strategy to do is to try and simplify the numbers in front of me. Uh, this, is, this number is like 3,000. So 3,000 is hard to grapple with, but I kind of maybe see, what if I, what if I said a problem like 1,000? 
what if it was 1,000 and then this is 300? So what if this was 1,000 and this was 100 times H? What would H be? Who thinks, who, who wants to share you that? It, you can either type it into the box or you could unmute and give the answer. One what would H be? What times 100 would give me 1,000? I'm not looking at the chat, so you can let me know, Mrs. Nelson, if anybody has an idea out there that they're sharing. Nobody does, except for Mr. Nelson's holding up some fingers over here. Mr. Nelson's holding up uh, 10 fingers. He's holding up 10 fingers. Yeah, he's so only got 10. If put, so if I wasn't sure, what if I put that 10 in there? What would 10 times 100 be? Would it be 1,000? I could check. Yes. Good times 10, and I know that's a zero, I can go, zero for the place, it is 1,000. So I know it would be 10. It's now, what, 10 system. So 10 times any number is move the decimal place one point to the right. One to the right. So I know that this answer is 10. What's another way I could show it? I could say, well, if I took the 1,000 and I divided it by that 100, I should get 10. 1,000 divided by 100, there are 10, 10 hundreds in 1,000, so 1,000 divided by 100 is 10. Again, if I wanted to go take a one more step and think of an easier problem, I could think about what if I had 24 is equal to 4 times h, and I know that that h is 6, what would I do? 24 divided by 4 gives me 6. Always this number divided by that one. That could be written as 24 divided by 4 is my h, and I know that that is 6 in that case. I'm always trying to think of like another simpler problem. And now I'm going to use that pattern of how I would solve that problem for the numbers that are trickier to solve. So this is just something I'm thinking about to help me a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to use the pattern. So I'm going to start with the number over here on that side of the equation, on the one side of the equation, the number that doesn't have my variable with it. And I'm going to divide by the number that's being multiplied by my variable. So in this case, it's 303, 125. Remember, this bar means divide. So it's just an easy way for me to show it. I can show the division symbol. And when I find that, I'll find H. So what really would I be doing? 3,758 and 7,500 divided by 303, 100. And I know my answer is going to be, I'm thinking it's going to be about 10 is what I'm expecting. Yeah. Now, people ask me, when is a time? Will they ask us, when is a time that we can use a calculator in sixth grade? And I would say now is the time because this is a nice, ugly problem. And I have so much other learning I'm showing from it. This is not what I'm trying to show I know how to do. I'm trying to show I understand all of this. Now is the time for the calculator. What are we typing in? 3,758 and 7,500. And then remember that's the division sign divided by 303. So I'm going to do it. Are you doing it as well, Mrs. Nelson? I am not, I know the answer is going to be somewhere around 10 though, so 10 times something. I'll check the calculator. I'll check with the calculator. My, this answer is 12 and 4 tenths. What I would do is I would do it one more time on the calculator. It makes me feel good. It's around 10, but it um, makes me want to always check on a calculator because it's so easy to make a mistake on the calculator either, and I wouldn't even no. 12 and 4 tenths. 12 and 4 tenths is the height. And it looks close to the numbers I have here. I have numbers like 24 and 12. It makes sense to me that that could be about 12. 24 and 4 tenths what? Of an inch. Because if I had inches cubed and inches squared, it becomes just inches if I'm dividing. We'll talk about exponents next week. So, makes me feel good. It's still about what we were expecting, about 10. It's looking like those kinds of numbers here. 
A lot's been going on here. A lot of thinking's been shown. And when we say show your work, we mean showing your thinking. If you were doing this on the calculator, you wouldn't have to show this part of the calculator. But I am showing you that to solve it, I would have to take that number and divide it by that number. I'm showing you what I'm typing on the calculator, but the calculator gave me the answer. But I'm always thinking to see if it makes sense. What questions do you have? <laughs>